Hi everybody. I'm going to get started now with my FaceTime Live. I'm Dr. Sally Foote and I'm here at the uh, Bella Behavior Learning Center. So today I'm going to, um, I have the camera a little further back than I usually do, but I'm going to show you some of the techniques and ways to use our safety tools, things like muzzles and uh, Elizabethan collars for safe um, handling of aggressive dogs. I just have a stuffed dog here because with a live dog, I don't have a camera person, so it'd be a little hard to try to you know maneuver that. But I'm um, going along with the theme I've had for these previous two weeks on aggressive patient handling as we're you know getting prepared for this Sunday's uh, workshop day. Uh, I'm going to just present a few things of what I'll be showing, you know, in that seminar. So typically, you know, we use things like muzzles. Actually, I'm going to bring this closer. I think it's going to work out a little bit better. Hang on, folks. Sorry about that. Let's see if we can get that. Nope, you can't see the tabletop. I apologize. Okay. And yeah, maybe I'll lower it. see that okay so um I'm just using whoopsie I'm just going to use my little stuffed dog here right now but typically we have muzzles and we may have you know basket muzzle like so there's also the Baskerville muzzles which are the padded muzzles oh uh, we also have oops we also have these which are some people call these the Mickey muzzles four flags over Aspen this is four paws so where they're open on the front, in the front, and they slip over the face. And these are meant for kind of shorter procedures, maybe a blood draw, giving an injection, clipping the nails, maybe at the longest. A dog may be wearing this for 10 minutes, maybe even 20 minutes, that's fine. You know, panting is really not something we need to be concerned about accommodating for in a dog unless they're having respiratory difficulty they're already coming in with breathing problems like a hit by car or a um, brachycephalic breed like an english bulldog on a hot day then this would not be advisable but for many other dogs for short procedures excuse me this can be more comfortable to wear and comfort's important if it's not comfortable they're going to resist it so we have to think of comfort for the animal in addition to safety for ourselves and trainability to wear it so this one can be great for short procedures. You can feed directly through the front. I use this style the most often in general practice because we usually didn't just need to slip them on for short procedures. Now for our really aggressives that were coming in, yes, we would have them trained to a basket muzzle. Now the third type of muzzle, this is typically, you know, used in our cats and prom promoted for cat feline use. Yet you can use this on a dog. And I'm gonna show you how we can um, you know, put these on a dog that it may be less stressful than the buckling you know, of, a, of, a, um, of that other you know, nylon, uh, nylon collar, excuse me, muzzle or the basket muzzle. Now the whole concept of the muzzle, of course, is to control the mouth, to either keep the mouth closed or if the mouth is gonna be open, that the mouth is not able to expose the teeth, you know, and if the mouth moves open and shut, if they do escalate up to a bite, because some dogs are reactive. Remember we talked about that a bit two weeks ago when I was uh, doing my FaceTime on body language. These are the dogs who may skip over body language signs. They're not gonna growl. They spend less than those 0.2 seconds in the stare from the ladder of aggression and go straight up to bite. So the muzzle needs to be protective of the mouth enough that if in that flash of a second, when you're giving an injection, when you're touching their body, when you put the medication in the ears, that they are not going to be able to injure you. Secondly, for some dogs, they actually do um, kind of de-escalate when the muzzle is on. Now this does not necessarily mean always that the dog is frozen and in fear, but it may, I think, sometimes for some dogs, reduce a little bit of conflict, like should I be ready to bite you or, okay, now that I can't bite you, I won't be as upset. And frankly, I also see where the humans, the handlers, the veterinarians, the technicians, the owners are less nervous themselves when the dog is muzzled because they know that oh, if he does flip to bite, no one is actually gonna get injured. And because we are more relaxed, 
we are more calm, we are not shedding out these stress hormones ourselves, this helps the dogs to also be more relaxed as well. So how we behave and our mental state definitely affects the dog. So if putting a muzzle on helps the staff to be less uh, worried, less nervous, as long as we make it happy to wear this muzzle, then we should use them. I just talked to a veterinarian not a half an hour ago about a case she has coming in and a reactive and aggressive dog who did not sedate well for uh, examination. And she is highly skilled in fear-free, low-stress handling. And in this case, as I said, we need to create that canine cocktail with the drive-by. It's a course I have, but the stripping down of the environment. Maybe he's going to be examined outside, uh, you know, upping the medication. And he has to be happy wearing that muzzle at home. Like he doesn't need, he's not, you, you're not going to do anything if you don't have video evidence from that owner of him happy about wearing the muzzle for even just the drive-in. That's the level of this dog. So that's the key. Muzzles become food masks. And how we put, if we have to put them on, so I come from the world of sometimes we have to give immediate care, right? They come in sick. Or those of you who are in shelter medicine, intake exams, uh, vaccination clinics and such. And now with curbside care, separating the animal from the owner, this animal might be more nervous and therefore might agitate up to aggression. So we need, we need to be able to get these on in the first try. So what we wanna do is um, select the muzzle appropriate to what you need to do, how long you think this animal may need to wear it. For myself and my staff, frankly, like I said, this nylon muzzle was easiest to slip on, easiest to continually feed through, and because it's this softer nylon was more comfortable. So it fit those three things for, we have to get it on in one try. This animal, we don't have time to do muzzle training. We cannot do a ton of counter conditioning. So which muzzle are we going to go to in our little uh, closet? <laughs> of muzzle choices, this often would be the style we would pick first. Secondly, if, our, if our, we're gonna put the food in the muzzle that this animal thinks is totally awesome, I mean, we go to the highest level of yumminess here because that, that attraction, you know, and uh, desirability of the food is what helps to um, increase the motivation for the animal to want to eat. So in this case, we uh, would use peanut butter. So here's something I thought of too. Now these are like the little individual peanut butter cups. You know, restaurants may have these, um, you know, cafeterias and things like this. But, you know, for some of you that are in shelter care or uh, even in vet practices to kind of re always be ready with some of these soft, you know, really super yummy rewards provided you don't have a peanut allergy. Uh, ask maybe a restaurant if you could buy a bunch of these cups from them because these keep at room temperature, you keep them in the pocket of your lab coat, your smock or your coveralls. And so then you just peel open and you can then, you could just peel it open and use it. So how do we go about, and I'm just gonna go ahead and show you. So how we would load up the muzzle. So how you load up the muzzle, and these are the steps of my um, positive muzzling. You can see the video on my YouTube channel. It's called Muzzle for Rewards. So here are the things. We need, we need the platinum reward, okay? We need things like peanut butter, Braunschweiger, squeeze cheese, and that reward is saved. It's only used for this. Please don't use peanut butter for everything because then when you need to put it on with the muzzle, we haven't made the muzzle that much more attractive. So let's save the best for the most difficult thing we're asking them to do, which may be to put their face into a muzzle and to change the meaning of the muzzle. I want this to be awesome. I want this or the other muzzles to be incredibly wonderful. So let's save the yummiest reward for that. Well, in this case, I have peanut butter, so that's what I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the peanut butter and you are going to put it right here at the front. Okay, I don't know if you could see that. I'm gonna bring it up closer, see that? That's the front of the muzzle, okay? The runway up the muzzle is empty. Now then, I'm gonna pretend I have a live dog and I'm just, like I said, I don't have a camera person so I'm doing this with a stuffed dog. So let's say this is my live dog and I wanna get the muzzle on them. And in this case, um, let me see if I can arrange this better on the table here. Sorry. 
so it could be a little more real life. Okay, Let's see if you can see my little dog. I think you can see my little dog there. No, let me go back. Sorry. Okay, so here's my little dog, and let's say he's on the table, and maybe my assistant has a hand on him so they can, you know, have some control over him. Get some of these things out of the way too. But we need to get this muzzle on him. A couple of points. We want to turn the muzzle backwards so that the dog is eating out of the front of the muzzle. But we do not, we do not want to, don't face the dog like this, no. This frontal approach is more stressful for the dog and they tend to back away. Remember, you need to have the side approach. So the person who's gonna get the muzzle on this dog is going to hold it forward on the dog but standing from the side and actually slightly back so that the dog is not able to see you. If you need to use tongs, I've even used sometimes salad tongs, those long or barbecue tongs, where we are holding with the tongs the muzzle. So our hand is not there to get bitten. Remember, we want safety first. But the point is, the dog is going to eat this food out of the front of the muzzle. We're going to let him do that for a little bit, then we're going to take the muzzle away. Now the dog knows where their goal is. The food is out here, and it's to help them want to put their face into the muzzle. So let's say, oh, yum, 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 the dog ate the food. Yay, you're such a good dog. Now we're gonna load it up again, really slather that thing up, turn it around sideways and holding it, or again with the tongs. You're gonna hold it just from this one side, not over with two hands. Because if you do the two hands, you are now reaching over the head. And this increases stress, you've increased that approach, many of these dogs don't like head handling, so you've just added two or three triggers whereby now the dog may turn and bite on your hand. So remember, we're stripping away triggers. You can hold one hand on the side this way or with like the tongs. If you want to have that extension and protect your hand, you can wear gloves on your hands also. I mean, we're doing this because we're concerned about bite risk, so we want to reduce that. Okay, so now we're going to bring this forward and, our, and we, want, we want to bring it forward kind of quickly where the dog's like, oh, and he puts his face right in, and then you quickly come up behind the head and clip. That needs to be the smooth action together and clip. Don't, please do not spend a lot of time on, oh, oh, are you getting it in? Oh, oh, fiddle, fiddle. Because for your, when your hand comes around this back, like I don't know if you could see with the comments, my hand is coming around the back. You have 0.2 seconds to do that, to pick up the side, to clip, before the dog may trigger up to head flip. Anytime there's a head flip, that is a bite attempt. There, it was a video uh, that was shared one time uh, from Dr. Ian's Lostress Handling book, where when I worked for Cattle Dog Publishing, we purposely slowed the video down to watch it in slow motion. And when she was applying to a dog who was already nervous, a muzzle or trying to actually and the dog did a head flip in slow motion you could see the dog attempted to bite her three times it was her skill in getting out of the way and and pulling the muzzle away that the dog quickly de-escalated within one second to not bite but that's how fast these things happen and that's why technique is really important so you're going to hold it from the side put it level so that it's right under the jaw and we want we want it to we want it to be right after the dog just ate this way so he knows oh the food's at the end so when you do this they move their head forward and then you come up quickly and clip and then immediately feed through the front there has to be continuous feeding through the front for that we usually would use a tool like a spoon you could use a syringe that is preloaded with something like the peanut butter or the baby food or the brown schweiger. But this spoon now needs to keep, I know it's a little loose here, needs to keep continuously feeding like this to keep this dog eating the food. Because if he's eating the food, remember on that ladder of aggression, he's dropped his anxiety. And it's how he's now learning. <gasps> Muzzle means constant feeding of peanut butter. Muzzle is awesome. Muzzle is wonderful. If we wait, if we don't give them food until after we've done some treatment and then we give them rewarding, if we go into that operant conditioning, oftentimes what's happening is you take away 
feed food, the dog is slightly starting to rise in his anxiety and may actually go to stare or get stiff. Remember that stiffening up and staring. So he's actually re remembering and learning to be tense wearing the muzzle. You're, you're, it's not really desensitizing or counter conditioning in the manner that we need to be doing with these dogs in our care. Okay, so that was the nylon muzzle. When you're done, there's another very important point. Give the dog the muzzle to clean up. Even if I throw them, now here's the thing. Some of these dogs can also be resource garters. Sometimes you would just lay the muzzle down, let the dog clean it up, but we had sometimes the dog would grab the muzzle and start growling because you see, now the muzzle is the food delivery device. And if this is a resource garter, now he just grabbed the resource and now he's gonna get aggressive on you. So when you take it off, hold it with the tongs or whatever so he eats out of the front of it because that last memory is a lasting memory. Then he remembers, wow, wonderfulness about the muzzle. So a nylon slip muzzle, how the mouth goes through, this is fine for procedures that the dog can be muzzled up to a half an hour in my clinical experience without any detriment to their health. They're able to, they don't need to pant for that long if they have breathing problems. If they have, um, you know, difficulty in breathing, then no, we're not gonna use this or what we're going to do is go to one, excuse me, I'm gonna get a larger one here my little box okay this is super large but you get the idea if I had a dog with breathing problems especially our brachiocephalic breed dogs where these basket muzzles come too high and they're pushing on the nose and they're gonna cause pain and they're pushing up on their eyes so you can't use a basket muzzle what do you do get another nylon muzzle that's oversized so for a dog this size, a muzzle like this, you're gonna do the same technique. We're gonna feed out of the front, get the face in, come up and around, and I would adjust that to clip. But now you see the front of the muzzle extends longer than the dog's mouth. And he can open his mouth to breathe or to pant, but because the fabric is longer, it's protecting any teeth from being able to bite. And I know this is, this is a super big one right now, but the front, bridge part, even if it does come near the eyes, because it's fabric, it can fold and it can like conform to the shape of the face, which is far more comfortable than something like a rigid plastic in the basket muzzle or even in the Baskerville muzzles, because it's still pretty rigid. Okay. And in the, and the loose fit like this can accommodate then the panting and if they do need to drink water. So again, before you even start to apply a muzzle, Think ahead about how easy is it gonna to be to get on, how comfortable is it going to be for this animal to wear, how long will they need to wear it, and do I need to accommodate for anything like you know breathing um, and breed type and things like that. Okay, so these are my, and when you're all done, because the dog's cleaned up the actual food, then we just will put these in the sink and hand wash them real quick with just you know dishwashing detergent and just hang them up on the towel rack to dry it's okay for a dog to wear a wet muzzle so if my next appointment came in and i needed this muzzle it's fine for that dog to put this muzzle on if it's damp that's not going to hurt them at all so uh, these muzzles we used a lot and are safe now a few tips on the basket muzzles basket muzzles are nice because they can wear them for a long period of time they're really very protective about the mouth and the face but a few things that make them a little more tricky, trying to put them on a dog who, uh, first of all, especially if they've ever most, were usually muzzled when they're already nervous is, these are a little more difficult to get easily guided over the face. When you load it up with food, you're gonna have to put it on the inside of the end of this muzzle, and it's harder to feed through the front. Now you can do it with like a squirt, squeeze cheese type, you know, nozzled, feeder, but again, it's hard to, you know, your finger has to be near there. So um, a long syringe may work, a turkey baster could work, so that you're safe. Okay, I'm, I'm really all about safety here. But a few things that I, I found that if you, if you don't have the bath, the Baskerville muzzles, are, are a lot of practices are using those, and they already have that T-strap coming up here. But if you don't have Baskerville and you have this type, this is a Jasco type, and personally, I do like these because there's a padded strip on the top, and the shape of them, 
where they come on the nose is a little bit easier sometimes than um, the Baskerville will. Baskerville's were, excuse me. When you get these on the dog, again, you have to be on the side approach, put it near the face so the dog wants to put their face in. So now when they have the face in, I hope you can see this, <clears throat> excuse me, with this leash is like that T-strap. Now, especially if this animal may all of a sudden want to head flip, holding firmly on the T-strap can help to keep the muzzle up on the face so they don't flip it off. And then, then from the back, you're gonna come from the back, you can reach around. And this buckle on this brand, sorry, I didn't show that there, can also adjust to be buckled up high in the middle of the head, which is much safer for uh, putting this on the dog, not down here by the ear. Adjust that strap so you're doing the attachment up between the ears here. So you have, I don't have my big breed dog stuff here, but so you would have, you know, the T coming up between the ears so it secures it and the buckle at the top. Now this strap, what would you do with that? You can loop it through the neck collar. You know, you can just double under the chest and come back up around as another means of securing that muzzle. Now, so this is a muzzle that dog could wear for hours and to be safe that way. Before I'm done here, one last muzzle I want to show you, and that was this one. As I said before, I'm going to come a little closer here to the camera. So this one uh, we frequently use for our cats, and a lot of the cats, it, it's a very nice muzzle for the cats to wear because how it completely covers the face, you can get it on in kind of one motion. So using my little stuff. So this type of a muzzle can be used on dogs. You could do this, use this muzzle on some of your smaller breed dogs. It, uh, because it tends to fit loosely around the face here, it may be uh, helpful in some of, your, some of your more narrow faced dogs or if there's been a mouth injury or severe dental disease, like in our little chihuahuas that really have horrible teeth. And so their jaw bones may be fragile and all that. So how in these, how these work is, I'm gonna put my little dog like so. You hold the two little loops, and again, we're gonna to wanna to work from the side. The idea is you're gonna come right up over the head like so. See that? And then you just pull the two strips like that, and it's secured on the head. So pretty much in that one movement, you've got the muzzle on. Now again, it's an open-ended muzzle. You could, with a syringe, squirt baby food, peanut butter, squeeze cheese through the front of that muzzle and they'd be able to lap it up in there and eat it. These muzzles are designed to come up and cover the eyes and that can help too. Now they're not seeing your reach, seeing so much and that again helps to decrease triggers that are common um, anxiety and then aggression producing triggers for our dogs that are in care. So this was kind of a quick FaceTime. Um, I, was, I hope you're able to see everything. I've kind of, like I said, positioning this was a little tricky today, but uh, I, I'm going to be demonstrating these techniques, using these, and, and in addition to this, also cowl technique, how to use the um, even Elizabethan collar in a low stress way to keep us pre uh, protected as well as uh, reducing stress on the patient. Uh, that may be anxious or aggressive and more on Sunday, uh, June 7th is coming Sunday. If you're interested in taking the workshop, I still have space for the live streaming. Go to my website, drsallyjfoot.com and go under the veterinary events and you'll see speaking events and there's the registration link and the brochure you can download. If you are Fear Free certified or Low Stress Handling certified, email me a photo of your certificate as the uh, verification, and then I will send to you the discount code because I am offering discounts uh, for fear-free certified and low-stress handling certified, as well as group uh, enrollment. So thank you very much. I see a lot of people have joined here today. Um, I hope this has helped you, and I will see you next week again, and keep the comments and ideas coming. Bye-bye.